Uh, moving on, and this is one is from Phil. Um, no second name, so apologies, Phil. Uh, Phil says, um, we all talk about Michael Keane, and Michael Keane should be dropped from the team for Jared Branthwaite. However, guys, I now believe it's time for James Tarkowski to be dropped from the team. Michael Keane has been better than James Tarkowski over the last few games, and Tarkowski's form all season has left a little bit to be desired. Michael Keane is always, always the scapegoat, but there is no doubt about it in my mind. Michael Keane this season has been considerably better than James Tarkowski. Thoughts on that one then, guys? It's a val- very valid point. I think it's Jared Branthwaite and another, especially going forward. Jared Branthwaite's our best player. He's an £80 million centre-half. He's been through the, the few weeks now of getting back up to speed. You know, We tried to get him back in for the Crystal Palace game. He got injured, came back, and now he's probably fully fit and ready to go. You know, For me, Michael Keane has been better than Tarkovsky. I completely agree. We had the uh, an article recently where it was stated that Tarkovsky's been playing through back and glute pain. You know, there was mentions of potential, you know, pain injections before games. If he really is struggling that much, then he's pulled out and you play Michael Keane and, Jay, uh, and Jared Branthwaite. They're the two you play on form. And if that's what we're doing on, on form alone, Michael Keane starts out of James Tarkovsky. The, the, the counter argument is Jared Branthwaite brings the best out of James Tarkovsky too. They have a better understanding. They had the fourth most clean sheets last year. They had really good stats together. That does carry weight. It it, it does carry weight. And that's probably the shoe on the other foot argument. Let's see how them two are when they get back together. They played against Crystal Palace. Yes, we can see they're a sloppy goal. But besides that, we look quite solid and compact again. We could play five yards further forward. And it's probably James Tarkovsky's better games. That game... You know, I think especially at home, recently for Brighton, he was terrible. I thought uh, the Newcastle at home, I thought he was terrible. I thought he was okay um, good at the weekend. Away, he? he was good, good at Ipswich Ipswich. away. Yeah, he was. Better away than he is at home, and I don't know why that is. The thing Most is, of the Everton players are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Keane hasn't played with Bramford before, has he, either, though? I don't think they've played together. If so, it's very rare. If so, it's I'm very rare. I'm yeah. just if so, it's very, very rare. Yeah. Yeah. I just... The thing with Tarkovsky, the thing that's yeah. mostly annoying me this season is... If a ball gets played through our midfield, normally it's like a winger or number 10, he rushes out mm. and just nails yeah. whoever it is. You know, once or twice, I don't mind, but <laughs> it, on Saturday, it was three or four times. I actually think that's normal, normally a sign of a defender not thinking straight. Yeah, and it, it, the They're game's in his head. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. so, game. Yeah. you know, if he is playing with that injury, maybe he doesn't want to get turned on the spin, maybe he's doing that initial foul so he's not getting spun by his, def- his striker. I don't know. The argument here for me is it's Jared Blanthwaite and one other. I don't know what the, the, the guys well, what, think. What is the thought here then, Paul? It's a great question. Again, just as Michalenko, Tarkovsky is in fit, he's carrying an injury. If that's the case, he should come out to the sides. But let's not get it twisted. Evans, two best centre halves are James Tarkovsky and Jared Blanthwaite. Yeah, they are. And the, the record speaks for themselves, for itself last mm. season. Tarkovsky may have started a bit slow this season, but again, he started slow last season mm. where be, until Jared came into the side. I'm not saying it is to do with Michael Keane. Michael Keane's been very good, especially last three games or so. But Tarkovsky is carrying an injury. If that is if that is actually the case, if he's carrying an injury, he should come out of the side, but on obviously on medical conditions, not on not on football, not on footballing condition. Because again, as I said, as I said, sorry, James Tarkovsky and Jared Branthwaite are Evans, best two centre halves, and the big the big talking point really is who plays with Jared Branthwaite. Jared mm. Branthwaite should be of the outfield players, the first name on the team sheet every single week. Jared Branthwaite, he's that good. I think, I know we got a point in the end, but that's just decision to not start him, Saturday was baffling to me. If that's any other side, their centre-half comes in regardless. If, if Virgil van Dijk is out for Liverpool and let's say... For argument's sake, Canati and Joe Gomez play or Canati and Kwanzaa, whoever it is, and they get two or three clean sheets, they get two or three big wins or big results, and Virgil van Dijk is back fit, he comes straight into the side. Mm-hmm. If Arsenal had got a really good result against Liverpool, if they held on and won, Saliba comes straight back into the side. City, Ruben Diaz comes straight yeah, back. Yeah, I agree into, with that. Not, not even them, them sides, the likes of West Ham... The likes of, um, well, even Spurs. You'd, Spurs, you'd say Romero. Spurs. Goes when Romero's been out, yeah. even if or they've Mickey had good performances yeah. with Drag- with Dragerson, yeah. 
Romero or Mickey van der Ven have came mm. straight back in. For Fana, as soon as he's been fit for Chelsea, he's came straight back in. It's the same for Jared Bramford. Everton aren't in a position to leave a 75, 80, 85 million pound player on the bench. You're not in the position after turning down 55, 60 in the mm. summer. You cannot do that. And I understand that maybe his fitness isn't up to date, but let's be honest, James Tarkovsky isn't much fitter than Jared Bradford went now. Right yeah, now, yeah, yeah, and as I say, it's not necessarily dropping Tarkovsky. It's who plays next to Jared. Mm. Well, I, I think it's got to be Tarkovsky, hasn't it? Because I know his form is maybe not particularly great, but his fo- ha- has Tarkovsky's form been that bad enough to drop him? No, I, I wouldn't say it's been that bad. I'm, no, just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, a, just a bit worried with his when he's turning. He looks like he's struggling when he's like the, yeah. when he's having to turn and and chase. But we seen last season the amount of times that Jared got him out got him out of trouble was quite a lot of it. Looking certain games, but I feel like Paul said I think that, that if you if, if Tarkovsky is fit enough to be playing now, he he'll be fit enough to play at the weekend for mm. Dice. I think Dice trusts him. He has his certain players that he will always trust, and he will always they'll always pay play through the pain for him. So, but I think like I said, credit to Michael Key in this season. I think he's done okay. I think he's come in and done what a fair choice centre back would do is fight for his place. Um, been in some very important moments for us this season with goals as well. But from my point of view, Tark- Tarkovsky and Bramfleet are the partnership. And it was, like Paul said at the weekend, Jared Bramfleet should have been back in the Everton team. But I think me and you, Bobble said that we both would have had Jared in. But we, we both knew what Dice would probably do and stick with Michael King because he yeah. sticks by his principles and that's yeah. he's a principle based manager and he always will be and <clears throat> I think I think this weekend I'd like him to get Jared and Tarky back together and hopefully it'll start a little run and then obviously we've got the international break coming up mm. then where he can have another rest. Mm. I've got a question. Mm. If the player in question wasn't Michael Keane, mm-hmm. would Jared Branthwaite have came straight back in? If it was O'Brien having those, those performances, would Jared Branthwaite have came straight back in? I think he would have. I, the, the one the one thing that Dice has done, I think, is, is handle play as well. Coming back from injuries, I think he shoehorned Bramthwaite in for the Palace game because we were desperate. We were desperate for a win on the back of four losses, and then he he goes down again and picks up another muscular injury. Mm. You've got to start looking after players with muscular injuries. I think we're on the back now of five games without a defeat. I think if there would have been a few losses in there, Jared would have been straight back in. But I think on the back of the fact that we've won against Ipswich and then we've got, you know, a few draws as well, and if, mm. then I think he just probably left it at the same. What we can't have is try and force our best player back in and then he breaks down and goes off for six months again. He's got to be 110% ready to go. I know people don't like me using that, but 100%. He's trained for two but, weeks, so Ben. I, I, I get that argument, but yeah. Patterson's trained for how long? How Patterson, is Patterson, Patterson has been out for then. way longer than Jared he, Well, well let's, get, go, let's go back. The, the, the groin well. issue starts at the back end of May and he played through the pain. He went to the England camp, he had the surgery on his groin, came back, picked up another muscular injury. Now another muscular injury. It, it's a sign that it just shows that you've got to t- you've got to be so delicate, so delicate. Speak to any physio out there. You've got to ensure that that muscle is completely back to normal. Otherwise, you'll get injured elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Dominic Calvert Lewin, prime example, had an issue elsewhere, affected his uh, his quad yeah, in the you end. Compensate in other areas. You, of course. Your muscles and your body start compensating for that injury. Slight bits of movement until everything gets to sign off then he doesn't play until he's deemed completely fit, which I think now he probably is. Do you think, though, like Paul just said, do you think if it was Jake O'Brien who had been put in and had been this on this decent run of form, like Michael Keane, do you think he'd have pulled Jake O'Brien straight out and put Jared straight back in, or do you think he'd have gone the same way? I think he would have stuck the same. Yeah, same. I just think, like I said, there, he's a principle-based manager. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. think it, it matters who it is. I think he would have he would have stick he would have stuck with that centre back because his argument would be we haven't lost the game of that partnership, so it's another big decision for him this weekend because we didn't get beat again at the weekend. No, no. But this is this is why like what is he the sixth pay, highest paid manager in the league? He's got to make those decisions. So, well, I, I again I disagree. I think the argument was last season, Carvalhoen went on this awful run of form, mm-hmm. kept his place, kept his place, kept his place. Better started, got to go. Carvalhoen started in the next game. Mm. I think mm. he's always had his favourites. We 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 know this. We saw it in his first season when he persisted with Keane, persisted, 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 yeah. until it until it got 
untenable to to keep on playing Michael Keane. And Mina had to come in, and that's when Everton picked up form. I think if it was if it was Jacob Bryan or another centre half, Jarrod would have came straight back into the side, mm. and he must be hundred and ten percent ready if he's making the bench. Because I think he weren't on the bench and Ipswich switch weren't. No, he was no, not on the bench. And he trained for a week mm. or just over a week. They come so on for 10 must, minutes as well, didn't they? He must yeah, have exactly. been 110% ready to be on the bench the weekend. It, mm. The thing is, people start saying, oh, but Michael Keane played for loads under dice beginning of the last season. He only played twice of the first two games, then Jared Bramfway came in mm. last year. Yeah, because we lost the first three. And, and he was carrying a knock. And he was carrying a knock. And that's what I mean. You formed. You lost your first three. Got to change. But we're on a run of form now where we... I think he will change it on the basis of how poor the performance was Saturday. I think if we would have gone on and completely dominated Fulham and won 2-0, he would ch- he would stick with the same team. But, but it, I understand the but argument. But again, there's times that form goes out the window when a player is that good. Yeah, As I say, I if that. Kwanzaa's having that form for Liverpool, Van Dijk comes straight back in, no questions asked. If Kivio is having that... Perf- them kind of performances for Arsenal. Mm. Saliba comes back in, no questions asked. I wouldn't put Jared in them brackets, yeah. Forever, and he's that important. Yeah. Forever, well, he's, forever, he's, he's that not, important. He's not world-class uh, yet. I'm not saying world-class, I mean how important he is to that side. Mm. He is Evans' best centre-half. Oh, yeah. All he is day. Evans' best outfield player. Again, if you value the player at 75, 80 million, you value him at world-class. You've got to give him the world-class treatments. If it's Joao Virginia... And Pickford's out for a few games. As yeah. soon as Pickford's fit, he comes straight back into the side and there's no questions asked. It's exactly the so same. So are you, are you saying that Deitch kept Michael Keane in the squad because it's one of his favourites? In the team? Yeah. Yeah, I think he didn't. And I've been a big fan of Deitch. I think he didn't have the bottle to play Bradford. In case he got injured. Not necessarily that was the right decision. For me, Jarrah should have came straight in. And we're lucky that we got a late, late, late equaliser or if not, either, either came back to hold him. I've said this about Dyche a few times to you, Bob, about Michael Keane. I honestly think if Dyche could have his way, he would play Michael Keane every week. But and we'll it, find out Saturday. And it's we? nothing no, against Keane. And, and, so yeah, go on. It's and, nothing against Keane because he's been yeah. very good last three games, especially. He's been very good and probably he's been helping Tarkovsky out. But mm. I've said before, Everton are much better with Jared. He let he's better on the ball. Well, he can play ten yards further. further you can play ten course, yards yeah. further up. You've got recovery mm. pacing behind. Strong, I think. For how good Keane is in the air, Jared's just he's just bigger and he's got more presence in the air in the opposition box. Even for how good of a finisher Michael Keane is, it, Jared. It, Again, it's nothing against Michael Keane. It's just yeah. how good Jared is. It's what, just mm. how good that player what is. What do you think, Bob? Because we, we were next to him when you got the team yeah. a bit early and you said, I can understand why. You can look at this in two ways. If you sit down with the manager and, the, and, and his staff and you say, why have you started Michael Keane? If they've got a plausible argument, then you sometimes have to back the manager. And that's all, that is in all signs of football. And his argument would be, of course, well, we've kept two clean sheets... He scored a cracking goal, regardless, he scored a really good goal down at Ipswich. His form is really, really good. And ultimately, the structure is very, is as good as it's been all season right now, currently, after the Ipswich game. Of course it was. Yeah. And I, I, would, I would be hard-pushed to drop anybody from that Ipswich performance and the run that we're on, two wins and two draws going into the Fulham game. And because of that, and because of that reason, I'm going to stick with the same eleven. If you explain that to a professional footballer, genuinely, guys... Pro footballers go, all right, fair enough. I get it. I get mm. it. I've just got to bide my time for a game or two, and then I'll be back in. That, that's how it works. Yeah. So I get that argument from from the staff. However, Paul and, and what he's saying that is another uh, that is another fair argument. It is, yeah. Jared Branthwaite is Everton's one of, if not our best player, and for that reason, that reason alone, if he's fit, he starts. He has to start because Everton are not in a luxury position where we can not play our best players. If he's at Man City, you don't need to play him. You can just put John Stones there. Yeah. You can just put a Kanji there. It doesn't matter. Let's be honest, you could put you could put Bernardo Silva at centre as <laughs> it won't make a difference. <laughs> but you get my point, you get where I'm going with it. So I see both arguments here. I do. I really, really do. I know I, I do agree with Paul to an extent in terms of there are a little bit of double standards. Because yeah. as I've said previously, what we just said at the start of this on this uh, show. Based on form, if we're going to keep Michael Keane in the team based on form, then let's be honest, Vitaly Mikulenko should be pulled because his form's at rock bottom right now. Tarkovsky, if not. 
the, or my, my argument is more but I would say Bradford, Ta- to Tark, he's one of his men though, I, I, he? I would probably say Tarkowski's form probably isn't bad enough yet to be dropped no. I don't think it's been disastrous it's not as good as his normal standards yeah. but I think if you drop Tarkowski at the moment I think that's probably a little harsh because I don't think he's having he's not having 3 out of 10s every week clangers, is he? I, he's not I, having I agree I agree but, but to back obviously your point on what the staff would say about Michael Keane's form mm. then you pull out James Tarkowski for me the thing is just Bramfleet has to start yeah and I get it I get it. It's yeah. just there's nothing against Keane. Yeah, as I, say, I agree if, with that. If Tarkovsky come out and Jared comes in, I can say, okay, Tarkovsky's been a bit ropey, he's carrying a bit of a knock, and Jared's back in. Yeah, it's I'll, just I'll, the fact way, that Jared the way, didn't start. By the way, I'm not buying all this Tarkovsky's got a knock, by the way. He's medically fit. He's 100%. He, n- players are never 100% fit in a season. You always have a knock. You always have a bruise. You yeah. always have a bit of a bump. Oh, I took an elbow to the rib. It's a bit sore, but I'm okay. You have that. We've all played football. You have that throughout the season. All my toenails black. That sort of thing. You, <laughs> you, you, you get my point. I've been yeah. stamped on. I've been stood. You get my point. Players have. You, you have that throughout a season. I can speak to thirty players to now, now, and they all tell me, yeah, yeah. I've got a sore ankle, but I'm sound. I've got a graze on my knee. Whatever. Tarki is fine to play football. Trust me, he's absolutely fine. So I'm not really buying that. He was injured during preseason, yeah. a stress fracture. It's a couple of weeks. He's come back, and he's medically fit. I think what Paul said there is actually a good point about the the. the the favourites thing because even if you want to go back to last season McNeil was terrible last season yeah. and he carried on playing I do think he he does have his favourites I, I get where Paul's coming from actually thinking about it with like see your McNeils your yeah. Tarkies your Keens you can tell when he impresses Keno Tarky, all this type of slang that he comes out mm. with so yeah it's it, it, it's it's a fair point and, and you know what looking back at it I think I think the decision was to play Jared and Mm. And he, he sometimes is a bit too loyal, Dice, to certain players. Brown Freight and another, end of. That but there we go, that's the Q&A show. Uh, thank you so much for your questions. Sorry we didn't get through as many questions as normally. The cam question uh, through Ben, through everybody else, it sparked a huge debate. So apologies, but hope you're enjoying the content as always. And we'll be back very, very soon, actually, uh, with all the latest news coming out of Goodison Park and Finch Farm and some great guests lined up. In the meantime, take care and all the very best. Thank you. <laughs>